My name is Tom. My call is KN4JX. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up four digital slices on six meters, uh, running them all at the same time. This also could be used to set up four separate bands uh, on four separate digital modes. But uh, anyway, before we get started, if you could click click the subscribe button below. Give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. Now let's get one started. One of the first things we need to do is create four slices on one band scope. Uh, so what I'll do, I do is uh, I just put in the first frequencies, the MSK144 frequency. The next frequency is going to be 5275. Uh, come over here to the right right click on it and create slice and uh, dial in 275 and then uh, lock that one down right click over here to the side create another slice and we're going to make that uh, 50.313 which is the ft8 I'm rolling that with a mouse, just so you know. Um, lock that one down. And right click again, create another slice. <clears throat> then we're going to make this one 5318. And 318 is FT4. And lock that down. So that's one of the first things you want to do is create your four slices um, and however you want to have it okay now what we want to do is we want to create four desktop uh, shortcuts and change the targets on the on three of them so you'll just find your icon on the desktop if you don't have one you can create it just by going down here finding WSJT uh, dash X and go to this right click on it go to more go to open file location and then right click again and create shortcut. I'm not gonna do it because I've already got it on my desktop. But once you click shortcut, it's gonna ask if you wanna put it on the desktop and you're gonna say yes. Um, but you, you probably already have the icon on your desktop. So what I do first is I just right click, I copy, just come over here to the side, right click again, paste. Again, come over to the side, right click, paste. Again, right click and paste. Now I've got four um, of those uh, shortcuts created. Okay, now that you got all four slices uh, or icons created for the four slices, you're gonna name them that way. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna highlight this one. You can, I know the double click, the, the, the pause click, or you can just right click and click on rename. Same thing happens. Um, so anyway, you, I'm going to name this one A. You can name them whatever you want. I'm just going to make it easy. And I'm going to make it B. This one B. And this one C. And this one, D. And again, you can, all you gotta do is just right click on it, come down here to rename. I, I'm just doing a click pause thing and it can, it'll can it pull up the, the, where you can name things. Uh, okay, now all we need to do is change the targets for three of them. The first one is already the default target so there's the default target right click uh, properties I've already got it typed in here um, what you can do is just go down to the description section and I'll have this information down there and you can just highlight it copy it and paste it into this that box and click apply um, so anyway I've already done all of these uh, the, you know, there's rig three, DAX three. This is rig four and DAX four. So now that we have all four uh, icons created or shortcuts to four different WSJTs, 
We need to go to the cat. Start it up. And select the right radio. Now this is how use my, yours might look because it may be defaulted. I've deleted all of them and I'm going to start all over to show you how we're doing things. Um, so first things first, we're going to create uh, four of these TCP ports. That's a way Flex actually uh, communicates with multiple instances of uh, WSJT. Uh, it's like well, it's, they're like they're a COM port, their type of COM port. So anyway, let me start off here by we're going to create uh, one. Let's name it TCP A. Make sure we're on TCP. And since the default is already being used, the uh, five zero zero two, we're going to make this five zero zero three, and we're going to save that one. We're going to add another one. We're going to call this TCP B. And we're going to change that one to 5004. Make sure that's B. Save. And add another one. TCP. This is C. Five zero zero five. One more. TCP D. Save. Oops. Now, if you make a mistake, you can always highlight it. I forgot to put the port there. I think I can edit the TCPs. Maybe not. Yep, I can. All right. Now it's. 505, so I need it to be 5006. Save. Yeah, it edited it. Okay, that's all you have to do now to create the COM ports, the types of COM ports you need uh, to run the multiple instances. Make sure you're using TCP and, and not the uh, COM port, uh, like a CAT port. You want to use a TCP cap port. <laughs> so anyway, just make sure you highlight that box there and then change the TCP port as I showed you. All right, we'll go on to the next step. I should mention that the reason why we create these TCPs is so that the radio knows uh, which slice you're wanting to transmit on. So if you double click on somebody that you've decoded on one of the digital uh, WSJT programs, uh, the radio will automatically uh, shift its transmit to that frequency or to that, yeah, to that frequency or slice. Um, hope that makes sense. Okay, I just wanted to show you I've got all four slices running here. And um, if I were to close these out, and I bring up the cat. Now it's going to show these as red because they're not active. Uh, so to bring all those back, I just come here, go to six meters for digital slices, and it reloads that profile. It makes it a lot easier to bring that back up. And now our cat's going to be all blue because they're all there. They're all active. Um, minimize this. And we'll go to the next step. Okay, let's see how we did. Uh, before we start opening these programs, we go to WSJT. We're going to change a few things. I always lock all of these down because I don't want, when I start WSJT, I don't want it to change frequencies on me. I've already got these pre-programmed in. And I'll probably save all of the, what I'm doing right here to the profile again. Uh, DAX1. We want this one to be DAX2, and this one to be DAX3, and this one to be DAX4. I'll just show you that again. Just closing those. The one, two, three, four. You want all the DAXs to be right. DAX is turned on. 
and let's make sure we got okay the preamp is all the way up for everything um, should be the the, the uh, these DAXs are for DAX IQ is for some totally different I'm not gonna get into it so those are all selected correctly I'm gonna go ahead and save this to the profiles again profile manager and we're gonna highlight it which one is it okay, so I got this one I click save and now I'm gonna load it just to make sure I got it right yep they're all locked looks like all the DAXs are good so oops okay I think we're ready to try to start up these so the first one we'll start this one up see what happens okay this is this one should be MSK144 and it is if it's not, you just change the mode to which uh, MSK144. Now let's see what B comes up as. Should be Q65. I should mention before I go any further that uh, make sure you go into your audio settings for each WSJT you're running and change it to the corresponding uh, receive uh, DAX or digital audio exchange. Uh, to, for instance, this is slice B I'm running right here. So I've got uh, receive RX2 selected, digital audio exchanged, uh, receive two, and that corresponds with this slice B. So make sure you, you make those changes to where it's using the right sound card for the right slice. And that does. If this frequency is red, uh, you have to go in here to settings frequencies and you got to add that Q65 sometimes uh, maybe le later on it'll be uh, in later versions but right now you you got to add the Q65 frequency um, so what I do is just find a fifth, uh, 50 megahertz one and right click on it and uh, insert and then region 2 q65 and then you put the frequency in there but i've already got it so i'm not gonna mess with this one so q q65 is right there i've already added it but that's where you add it if this the frequency is red um looks like q65 is working okay I'm just going to bring it down. They're still running. All these things are running in the background. I just bring them down. So, because I don't, I'm only showing one screen here. We'll start up C, see how we're doing on it. And uh, C, I think I want it to be FT8. Yeah, so we got issues here. I'm going to click configure, go to settings. And we're going to change the, yeah, it's on the wrong radio. Go to flex. Flex 6000. Right there. <laughs> and um, like I said, I got this, all this stuff uh, copied over here. So let me. This is C, isn't it? Yeah. So, I'm going to change this address to that 127.0.0.1 colon 5005. Change that to cat. That should be all good. Let me get a test here. Yep, we got cat. and push the top now. So we're good on that. Um, click OK. I'm going to change this mode to, oh, it's already on FT8, but right here, when you, it was locked on FT8 frequency, but it went on the FT8 mode. So now we're on FT8. So that one's good. I'm going to bring it down. We'll start up D. Yeah, and uh, see what we 
I got going on here. D is not the right radio. Uh, here it is 6,000. Oops, just saw it. And we're going to put this in again, but we're going to make this 6. 5006 and change that to cat test. Yep, we're good to go on that. Okay, oops, I don't think the audio was set up. Go to settings, audio. Nope, it's on the wrong audio. So let's go to DAX 4, DAX receive 4, and transmit on this one. TX TX audio transmit that should do it on that I'm going to change this mode um, to FT4 and yeah, it's 318 oh sound card's not working so let's go here to DAX uh, 4 is not present I just clicked there and it popped blue so yeah it's working now. If those are, are ever yellow or something or grayed out, just click it again and sometimes it'll load it. And you'll, you'll need to mess with these drives for each one of them. Just think of it as four separate radios and four separate sound cards and four separate COM ports. It all works. So you just got to kind of treat each one of them individually. Now that I got all four of them running, um, they're not all visible, but that's the reason why you need a lot of monitors when you're running all this stuff so um, they're all running right now everything's working uh, I don't have any signals on six meters at this time of day so but they're all down here at the bottom running so it's all good to go we got four slices on six meters all at the same time so anyway we'll go to the next step and the next step would be if you want to run JT Alerts, Grid Tracker, whatever. Um, so let me start the first JT Alerts. It should attach itself to the, the first um, WSJT that's running. And it is. Okay, I got these things open. Let me close those. All right. Now, um, when I go to open another WSJT, it should connect to the next uh, JT Alerts. Oh, you'll get this screen pop up. You'll just say you want it to connect to WSJT, and it should connect to the next one. And it did. So now, and I and I and I could keep going with every one of the WSJTs. If I click again, it should connect to the. I'll get this screen again. WSJT, and it's connecting to one behind it. This one here, so, and it pulled it forward. So I don't need these things running. So anyway, um, gives you an idea. And there's settings in WSJT, or being JT alerts to set up all that. Um, but, you know, and then you'll have to play with to get the, the screens the way you want them and all that because you, it takes a lot of doing to get it all to fit. <laughs> so, um, and then you can add more monitors uh, like the rest of us are all doing. Uh, but anyway, I hope this helps you get started with multiple slices of uh, WSJT. I have four slices on six meters all at the same time. I have no issues with it and enjoying four digital slices on six meters. I hope this helped you. I uh, appreciate you watching. And if you could give me a thumbs up and uh, make some comments in the, the, down below, I'd appreciate it. Let me know what I, how I'm doing, if I'm doing good, or if I need to, to work on something. Thanks again, 73.